Hi, everybody. Thank you for joining today. I'm Natasha Roloff, the Director of Global Solutions Delivery and the Product Manager for Conga Redlining. So we're going to go ahead and get started. Um, just a quick reminder that if you have any questions, to please type them in the question box. We'll go through a couple of slide presentation, and then we'll jump into demo, and then we'll do Q&A. So just an overview of the Conga Acceleration Suite. So we've been making um, a big push to really talk about our products in the context of how we um, improve your business processes, how you get efficiency improvements and automation out of what we do. So if you have not seen the slide before, um, we have data, which we use with our product Action Grid, which creates an Excel-like experience um, directly within Salesforce that helps you view, analyze, and manage your data. We have our flagship product, Conga Composer, which does document generation. And we have Conga Redlining, which is the first module of what will become Conga Contracts, a fuller CLM contract lifecycle management suite. And then lastly, um, all of our products together, or data and documents together, really help create uh, reporting and visibility um, using your data in Salesforce. So Conga Redlining, just a couple of things that I want to point out before we start the demo. So we're 100% native to the Salesforce platform, and we've made a really conscious effort to utilize standard objects whenever possible. Um, you kind of have the classic trade-off between standard and custom. So with custom, you get exactly what you want, but there tends to be some instability and overhead. So from an architecture standpoint, we're trying to keep things as simple as possible. Uh, number two, automation. So we've created some nice features within Conga Redlining that do things like automatically recognize attachments from emails, automatically update versions within Salesforce. So we're really minimizing um, manual steps from the end user's perspective. Lastly, visibility. So using Salesforce as your contract or document repository, so giving access to anybody within Salesforce to see exactly where your contract is in the, uh, the process. So we also have redlining at getconga.com. So redlining is currently in beta and we are accepting um, beta prospects. So if you are interested in participating in the beta program, please send an email to redlining at getconga.com. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and switch over to the demo. So for this demo, we have two personas. We have Andy, our sales rep, who spends his days working in Salesforce, and he has been pre-approved by his legal team to negotiate on certain business term clauses within his agreements. So our second persona is Paul, our prospect, and Andy has reached the stage in his sales opportunity where he's ready to send Paul an MSA or Master Services Agreement. So we've already uploaded our MSA to our record in Salesforce, and now we're going to send it to Paul using Send for Negotiation. So I'm going to select Paul as my recipient, pick a template, type a quick message, So you can see down here that we've automatically attached that document to our outbound email. So now I'm going to change personas to Paul, who has just received this contract. And Paul gets to work exactly the way he works, which is staying in his email. So we're going to go ahead and open up the MSA. So as we're reading through this document, we notice in the payment section that we're being asked to pay due net 30 days. So Paul's company really prefers net 45 whenever possible. So I'm going to go ahead and make that change. We also see a section right here asking us to pay interest on any accruing balance. And we don't like that at all, so I'm just going to delete it. I'm going to save my document. There it is.
Okay, so we've gone ahead and made our changes to the document. I'm going to hit reply. We're going to send this contract back. So I'm going to change personas back to Andy as my salesperson in Salesforce again. And I'm going to go ahead and do a page refresh. So what we see here in the contract activity is a combination of standard Salesforce activities, so things like logging a call or a task, but then we've also added some functionality. Here we see the incoming email, and then we've automatically recognized that we have a new version of the existing document, and we've updated that version within Salesforce directly. So when we sent our initial email out for negotiation, we inserted a unique tracking thread ID, which allows us to recognize to an 80% or better match to the file name when an inbound email comes back into Salesforce. Uh, the combination of that tracking thread ID plus the file name lets us automatically update that we have a new version um, and see that in Salesforce directly. So now we want to see what changes have been made to the document, and we're going to click on View Redlines. So we immediately see here that we have our change from 30 to 45 uh, days net due, and we also see that we've deleted out this section here. So we have a couple of options at this point. We could continue to go through the negotiation process. So I could download the document, make the change, um, maybe make one of the two changes, and use the send for negotiation to continue the negotiation process. I could utilize native Salesforce approval processes if this record needed um, to be escalated to a different approval point. Or in the, uh, the happiest path, I could use my e-signature platform of choice, so Adobe Sign, DocuSign, etc., and I could go ahead and send this contract for signature and execution. So I'm going to go ahead and pause at this point and open up the floor to questions. Okay, so the first question is, um, is, is red, are the redlining functionalities available on custom objects in Salesforce? So the three quick actions or buttons that are proprietary to the redlining product are send for negotiation, view redlines, and then we have a third feature down here called select primary document. Um, right now, these are tied to the contract object in Salesforce, but our development team is working on making those available on all standard and custom objects. Oh, okay, we have, how do you accept the changes and what do additional red lines on the ones sent show up? So for accepting the changes, let's come back to view red lines, <coughs> excuse me. So at this point, to actually accept the changes, um, the product in its current state, you would download the document and directly edit the Word document. So one feature that we're working on right now is the ability to directly accept or reject um, in line uh, without having to leave the browser. So if you can kind of imagine over here to the right-hand side, um, something very similar to Microsoft Word where you would be able to accept or reject these changes um, and then update the, and essentially save the document in the background directly. Okay, second question. If the client does not reply to the thread, the ID is lost and the association cannot be made when the contract is sent back. That is correct. So what we're doing here is we're inserting this unique tracking thread. It's very similar to the native email to case functionality. If you drop that from the thread, um, you do lose that tie. However, you can rectify that by simply coming back and updating a version um, directly to the file object within Salesforce. And the way that you would reestablish that relationship is you would just start a new thread of sending for negotiation. 
Oh, we have a couple more questions that have come through. <clears throat> so if you want to edit, I think the question is if you want to edit the red, oh, if you want to redline the red lines, what does that look like? So I think that's basically a change within a change. And what that would look like is one feature that's pretty significantly different from Microsoft Word is this version functionality, uh, this version compare up in the top right. So let's say you're on iteration or versions 9 and 10 of the documents. Um, you have the ability to flip between different versions of documents pretty easily there. Uh, next question is, is there a version control? So I'm going to come back to the file repository. So as if you drill down into the documents directly, um, we have each of the versions saved um, against this file within Salesforce. And I think if there's, if there's something additional on that question, um, if you could please elaborate with a follow-up question. Okay, so I'm going to come back to the redlining, the redline question with a follow-up of the same section with dueling redlines, if you will. Um, okay, so I think what we're asking for there is... if you were to change a change as opposed to accepting or rejecting it. I'm going to go ahead and just... M let me make a change right here. Let's do 44. So what I was, what I was trying to explain I'm going to go ahead and save that, and I'm going to manually upload that to the record in Salesforce. So you can see we now have versions 2 and 3 here. So what I was trying to explain earlier was the ability to compare non-sequential versions to each other. So, um, Taryn, I can f I'll follow up with you offline um, and just make sure that that's, that's answering your question satisfactorily. Okay, next question, is version control set manually or does it automatically update the version upon acceptance of the red line? So what we're doing is we're automatically updating the version whenever a new document is received um, through that tracking thread. So here we can see, so if we look at the file in Salesforce, or the file object, so we have the master services agreement document and when an email came in with the attachment, we automatically updated to version 2. So the versioning is not contingent upon accepting anything. Okay, do we have any other questions? Okay, great. Well, thank you everybody for joining. And again, if you have any further interest, please send an email to redlining at getconga.com and I will follow up with a few of you offline as well. Thank you.